I want to do a short video talking about this Disney situation, this lawsuit with this woman who died in Walt Disney World. This is absolutely crazy. Now, I did a short on this to get it out right away, but I want to talk a little bit more about it because I'm just appalled by the whole situation. So first of all, we've always had this story, I don't know how true it is, that Disney has agreements to move dead bodies off of their property and have the coroner lie about where they died so that they can claim no one ever died in Disney World, which is, of course, false, but they have a legal agreement so they're allowed to say something something that's false, which is absolutely terrible. It's one of the things that bothers me in the United States is that it's easy to get government approval for disseminating false information. Is like, you can just get approved for it. That's kind of crazy that such a thing exists. You're literally buying the right to lie to your customers. Like, that's insane that the government would ever do. The purpose of the government is to protect the consumers and you're literally buying the right to not have them be protected. And they're just like, yeah, cool, that's neat. Anyway, so this woman, and uh, food in Disney World. Disney was told she had allergies and they gave her the allergens. Anyway, I'm sure just an accident, right? These things happen. The number of people that Disney is feeding day to day is insane. Accidents are going to happen. Like that's, that's understandable, right? It's really tragic and I feel awful for obviously for this woman and her family, but it's it's a, just a tragedy and, and on scale tragedies are going to happen. But uh, her husband has sued Disney for wrongful death, not for murder, just wrongful death. These things happen. It was wrongful. She did die. That's what that lawsuit is for. That's why that thing exists. But when that happens, there needs to be uh, penalties or else it's going to encourage it to happen again. If there were no penalties, why ever bother with allergens? If you could just be like, well, too bad. You know, I know they asked for it, but there's no penalty, so I don't worry about it. Right? You have to make people worry about it, and that's what makes things safer. So it's an important thing to be able to pursue. Well, it turns out that Disney is making the claim that because this guy, not his wife who died, right? Not the dead person, but the person who's trying to do something about it because he, at some point half a decade ago, had a trial of the Disney Plus service online that he has, I understand that they both have Disney in their name, but there is no reasonable way for an American consumer to know whether the Disney Plus service and the Walt Disney World Resort are actually connected in any way. Not that they should ever need to, but they don't have a way to know that. This is part of blind capitalism. They're, the way that businesses work in the United States, who owns what is not something you're privy to necessarily. And so even if he knew that he was signing an agreement with Disney Plus five years ago to trial a service that he may or may not still have, we don't know. And we're assuming he really did this. I don't know if there's any reason to think he didn't that he then would be waiving his rights, and I understand it potentially said this in the document, that's their claim, that he waived his rights to any legal action against Disney and they would have to go to some arbitration. Now, arbitration basically means Disney pays for someone to rule in their favor and you don't actually get to go to court. It's a terrible system that should never be allowed in a civil society. And as far as I know, isn't in lawful countries, but the United States not living under rule of law, it's common law. So things like this are given free sway. It's really a problem. You can, under certain circumstances, use arbitration as a means to get away from minimum wage. Real things have done that. It actually happens. I've talked to the government about it. They're like, yes, if you sign this or you, they claim you signed this, then you can lose the right to minimum wage simply because arbitration was suggested at some point. It gets pretty wild in the U.S., so just be aware. But this guy maybe signed this thing, maybe with Disney. There's so many, like, and, and there's so much in the United States where you buy brand names. I could, with enough money, go out and license the name Disney to put on a product. I want to sell hats. I'm going to go out and pay money to have a Disney branded hat. I could then have a document that says, oh, if you buy one of my hats, you can't sue me. And by putting on the hat, you're accepting this agreement. And if I had some way to be sure that they had read that when they put on the hat, I could try to hold that up in court and it might work. If I did that, there's no way for someone to know if by me making a hat with Disney hat with its name on it, if I actually represent the Walt Disney World Resort. Are those the same company? They could be two companies. They could be 10 companies in between. We have no way to know. People just buy those brand names all the time. And they're not always real. If you go to Chinatown in New York City, there's a million products that have Mickey Mouse on them that look like Disney. They say Disney, but they're not even aware of them at Disney because they had nothing to do with them. It's just people slapping that on there. There's so many ways that a consumer has no means to know with 
whom they are signing an agreement like that, that it's completely unreasonable for having a old agreement with an online streaming service apply to an in-person restaurant in a, a completely different part of the country. There's so much separation there, and I understand why Disney feels that there could be some connection. But to a normal consumer, the idea that this could be connected is so insane. And this is a major problem with living in the United States. But this highlights a lot of problems. Besides just highlighting the problems with common law, besides highlighting the problems with uh, the way that contracts are handled in the United States, besides uh, the problems that the United States allows these digital things that you have to click, I accept when doing anything, anytime, anywhere. All of those are their own problems, but it also highlights that Walt Disney is so callous about human life. This was not something where they came out and said, we're appalled by the scenario. We want to make this right. It's an accident. We're so sorry. How do we fix this as best as possible? Nothing is going to bring her back. Instead of that, they made the most ridiculous claim that should make every one of you absolutely terrified to ever set foot on a Disney property that you may have and very likely have in place an agreement that you don't know about with an enormous company that controls ships at sea, that controls massive amounts of real estate, that operates as its own government, you have no legal recourse if they do something to you. Now, if they hunted you down and murdered you, you still have no legal recourse, but at least in that situation, the government would likely take action. They're a huge company. The country very rarely takes action against large companies. So even that, you don't have a lot of assurances. So you need to be aware that this means that Disney is not taking your safety seriously, and it should really make you stop and think about whether or not being in any scenario where Disney could get to you is something you want to be. Have you ever purchased a product that has Disney's name on it? Have you ever rented a movie or gotten a service from them, then you need to be aware that you may have signed away rights you had no idea you could sign away and be unprotected from really major things like death. So that's something to be aware of. Now, someone asked me the question, could this have happened in Nicaragua? And I'm happy to say that I don't believe it could, and here's why I think so. One, Nicaragua is not common law, it's actual law. So there's actual laws that protect you. It's not just the judge's discretion. Common law is a code word for not under law, right? Law is just, it's just, well, we do what we think and it's kind of based on a trend, but there's no actual strict laws. Civil law, like we have here in the civilized world, terms go together, is you literally can't claim to live in a civil society if you are not under a civil law system. Common law cannot be civilized by definition. Uh, if you have civil law like we do here in Nicaragua, you can't just wave your rights away under normal circumstances. You also can't just have a random digital document presented to you that you have to click away as a matter of course and you are not expected to read, have no way to have known you're supposed to read, that you have to do every day. That means anything. If you want to have a contract, you actually have to have witnesses, you have to file that contract with the government, you have to do a number of things. Contracts are not this whimsy like they are in the United States. Now, I understand the United States has some real benefits in making contracts as low friction as possible. If someone says they're going to do something, they are held accountable to doing it. Some of that's quite wonderful, but it also means that you're constantly in a state of claiming what people should be held accountable for and trying to trick each other by sneaking in contracts where people didn't really realize there were going to be contracts. In Nicaragua, you can't do that. There's no sneaky contracts. You have to have very formal documents. They have to be on paper provided by the government. So you know it's a contract. It has to be in a certain size, in a certain color. It has to be filled out a certain way. And for it to be legal, it has to be signed and it has to be filed. If those things didn't happen, it's not a real contract. So you would know that you were doing something and they, the in this case, Disney, would have to go through a great deal of effort to take away your rights to not be killed. So, and if they even let them do that. And that honestly is a really important thing when it comes to contract law. If contracts are so trivial, so unimportant, that just anything randomly qualifies as a contract, you have that problem that drunk people just signing a piece of paper, someone mishearing what someone says, somebody making an offhand remark, in misinterpreting a joke, anything can be taken as a contract and that's really dangerous. Nicaragua protects against that. And you can say, well, that's a negative because it takes so much work. You basically always have to have a lawyer involved to have a contract. But honestly, when do you want to actually have a contract where you haven't brought in a lawyer and actually have the contract registered with someone so it has teeth? You don't want secret contracts out there that's bad for society and it's generally bad for you unless you're the criminal. Only criminals want to have secret contracts where no one has to know about it.
And of course, if you're going to use that contract, you have to tell someone about it. That's the point of a contract. So Nicaragua makes it much more discreet. I think it's a much better system, and it helps keep Nicaragua both a law-abiding country, unlike the U.S., where the rule of law simply means nothing, but also makes it very, and we use this term recently, intentional. You're not going to end up in a contractual obligation to some random third-party co company that you may not even be able to identify because you accidentally clicked on something on a web page that you didn't think about or even were aware was there because you do it 50 times a day. Instead, you have to be very conscientious in what you're doing. You have to put forward an effort. Your lawyer has to advise you. The company has to put in resources to get you to sign that contract. It's not something that is just going to happen as a matter of course. In the United States, the system is designed where large companies can put in a little bit of effort and screw millions, literally, of people. And the people have really no recourse and no ability to do anything about it. They have no ability to read or understand the contracts. The, the, the company like Disney can hire one lawyer for a half million dollars a year, and they can write hundreds or thousands of contracts that cause real damage. But millions and millions of consumers have really no option but to just accept them, they don't understand them, and they cannot possibly hire full-time lawyers for every individual person to sit around explaining every contract. And so many services would be unavailable if you understood what those things were. But many of those services are actually arms of the government. You may not be able to get health care or use a computer if you didn't get to accept those rules. And often you don't know what those rules are until you've gotten some of those rules already under your belt. It's a major, major problem in the U.S. And yes, there are some groups and agencies looking into it, but it is unbelievable how bad it is. And Nicaragua, by having much stricter and more formal contract law, has avoided an unbelievable number of those kinds of problems. It's not perfect, but I do think it is a world better. And so if the question is, would some tragedy like this happen in Nicaragua where you think you have a really important lawsuit to protect your family, and then you find out that something so completely unrelated a long, long, long time ago that you had no knowledge of whatsoever and no reasonable capability of knowing about waived your legal rights and protections? No, that would never happen in Nicaragua. That that's a ridiculous circumstance. It would have to be an insane government to ever make even a company like Disney think they could make such a claim. We don't think this is likely to hold up. Disney is likely to lose this one in court because it's so ridiculous. But that Disney thinks this is a viable thing and is so confident in it that they're willing to burn their image publicly in order to pull this stunt is a really major deal. It says a lot about what Disney thinks about the U.S. legal system and how much they can manipulate it. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. By buying me a coffee, you do not waive any rights. You have all the rights to sue me under all the normal circumstances as much as you like, because that's how nice people work and honest people. I'll see you all tomorrow.